Hello and welcome back to our channel, Tech Expert Tutorials. In this video, we will show you how to install the newest MySQL database server for Windows, version 9.1. Version 9.1 includes several exciting new features that we will cover later in the video. We will select the free community edition, and we will also install Workbench, a visual tool for interacting with your database. We will also be performing some initial setup. We'll cover all you need to know in order to get started with MySQL. This demo will show you how to install using a .msi install file, which automates most of the settings. If you are looking for a more manual or detailed installation instructions with more control over the install settings, then use the .zip install file. Link can be found below. We will also cover some common commands and how to use them. Here are some of the reasons you would choose MySQL over Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle. For more details on these other two databases, see our previous videos on each. Links in the description below. To begin with, the total cost of ownership is lower with MySQL, and there's a lot of support from a large community of developers, including a large open source library. The interface, called the Workbench, is more intuitive, and the database is optimized for smaller applications with smaller amounts of data and fewer connections. High amounts of data or user connections or complex queries would call for an enterprise solution instead. And there are several new and exciting features available in version 9.1. Some of the main ones are improved performance, faster query execution, enhanced query optimizer and execution engine for improved performance on complex queries, also reduced resource consumption. They have optimized the memory usage and reduced CPU utilization for better resource efficiency. Also, this version has enhanced security, which includes stronger encryption, including support for newer and more robust encryption algorithms for enhanced data security and improved auditing. This version has enhanced auditing capabilities for better monitoring and detection of suspicious activities. Next is enhanced functionality, including JSON support. There is improved support for JSON data types, including enhanced indexing and query capabilities. Also, some window functions, which includes expanded support enabling more advanced data analysis and reporting. And finally, improved scalability and availability. First is enhanced replication, such as improved replication performance and reliability for high availability deployments. Next is improved group replication. There's enhanced group replication for improved scalability and fault tolerance. Here is a web page with more details on the features added or improved in 9.1. Link in the description below. Okay, let's get started. To begin, we need to download the .msi file for the version of MySQL we will be installing, which is 9.1.0. Go to the dev.mysql.com downloads slash mysql webpage, and you will see the most recent version by default. You can also change the operating system here if you want to install on Linux or another OS. Click on the Archives tab to see a more complete list of versions and patches that are available. For this demo, we select product version 9.1, then click on the first download button. Skip the login or sign up and select the start my download link. When the download finishes, run the installer and click next. Accept the license terms and click next. We will try installing the custom version, which includes the database server, connectors, documentation, samples, and more. Click next, you will see disk usage for each component. Click on each component to get more details about them. This installation will include external dependencies, such as some C libraries. Click Next. Click OK, then click Next. Then click Install. This will take a few minutes. The screen shows the status of the installation. When the installation is complete, select the Run MySQL Configurator and click Finish. Now we will configure our database. You can see there are several steps involved. Click Next. First is selecting the data directory. You would keep the default unless you want to keep the data on a different disk for higher reliability. We are setting up a developer machine here. The main difference is how much memory this database will typically use. We want to use TCP connections and to open a firewall port. You can change the port number if you like. We will leave it set to the default 3306. There are some options available for advanced logging settings. We set up a root account with a password here. This first account uses the name of root, the default account for logging in. 
We can add some user accounts here or do this later. For now, we add one user and create the username and password credentials on this form. This account named sysadmin will be used for admin purposes later. We enable MySQL authentication, add a password and click OK. Click Next. We want the MySQL server to run in the background 24 seven. So we set this up as a Windows service that will start automatically at startup. We use the standard system account for running the service. We give the service a name. On the next screen, we can add more users and permissions later. For now, keep the defaults here and click Next. We won't load the default databases. We will be creating our own later using Workbench. Click Next. We are ready to apply our settings. Here's the list of settings we are about to apply. Now click Execute. The installer will run through several configuration steps. It will stop the server if it is running from an earlier installation, it will update firewall settings, make changes to the Windows service, initialize and start the server, create accounts, and update the start menu. Everything ran successfully. If there were any errors, you can view them in the log tab. We usually copy the log in case there are issues later. Click Finish. Now we will install the Workbench IDE for MySQL. Version 8 is the most recent version available. Go back to dev.mysql.com and look for Workbench. Select Installation to view the system requirements and some options. There are three listed here. You may or may not need to install the first two. The download link is provided here. Click on the link for the standalone download. Click on the download button at the bottom. Once again, select the Start My Download. Click on the file when it is finished downloading. Verify this is for Workbench version 8 Community Edition. Click Next. Select Complete, then click Next. Note the installation destination folder, then click Install. When it is finished, click Finish. Make sure the Launch button is selected. We had a connection setting from the previous video. Delete it. Next, we will verify our service is running and set to Auto Start. Looks fine. Let's go back to the workbench. Click on the plus sign to create a new connection. Fill out the name or a default name will be assigned. The default settings are fine here. Click on OK. A new connection shows up in the window. Right click and select Open Connection. You will see a warning. As of this date, there is no new version of Workbench that has been updated for MySQL 9.1, but most of the basic options will work. Make a note to upgrade Workbench when a new version becomes available. Click on continue anyway. Here we only see a sys schema, that is the default schema. We don't want to use that. We create a new schema by right clicking and selecting the create schema option. We name it test schema and click on apply. There are options for different char sets, the default works fine in most cases. Review the SQL and click on apply again, then click finish. We can see the new schema, open the folder to create and populate a new table we will go to Gemini AI and ask it for some SQL statements. Here is the prompt we use to create a new table with some columns and data types and a primary key. Copy the output and paste into a new query window in the workbench. You can run one more commands by selecting the SQL and clicking on the lightning bolt execute button. We select both statements and click execute. There's some output shown here indicating the status of the SQL you ran. A green check mark usually means successful. Expand the tables list and we see the new table now, along with its attributes. Next, we will ask Gemini AI to create a new store procedure to select records from our new table. Copy and paste the output and execute the statement in the workbench. We see the new store procedure. We can view the SQL contained in the store procedure by selecting it, then selecting send to SQL editor and create statement. Now, we will call that store procedure to verify it works. Looks fine, but there's no data in the table yet. So next, we will ask Gemini AI to create an insert statement to populate some records in the new table. Copy the output and execute in the workbench. Oh, forgot to give the table name. Need to change that. No errors in the output window below. Now we call the store procedure again and we see some records in the result grid. Okay, looks like everything is working fine with no more issues from our install and upgrade. To wrap up, today we covered the basics for installing MySQL and Workbench, along with demonstrating some common commands. Well, that's all we have for today. Stay tuned for more videos on advanced topics with MySQL.
As always, comments and suggestions are welcome. See you next time.